Good morning. We're so glad you're with us in, in worship today. Uh, we don't have the, the severe cold that we had earlier this week, but it's still a bit chilly. But I hope that our, our hearts are warm and we're warm by our fellowship together, even at a safe distance. We're glad you're here joining us in person for worship, and we're glad those that are online are, are joining us as well. Uh, let us now open our hearts, our minds, our very selves to the presence of God's Spirit as we come together to, to lift our voices in prayer and, and celebration of God's love and God's call to you and me to be the body of Christ. Now let's uh, start our worship by singing together, We All Fall Down. Let's sing together, We All Fall Down. We'll sing it through twice. Again, we're glad you're here with us in worship today. Now, let's join together in our litany from Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. In the heavens God sent a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. Witcher is being temperamental this morning. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, and the drippings of the Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. 
Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Please join me in our opening prayer. Creating God for a glimpse of holiness and wholeness, we come together in person and online to worship. For meaning and purpose, we gather as many people, but as one body in Christ. Remind us as we sing, pray, and reflect that we each are unique and gifted accordingly, yet we are also united in faith. Lord Jesus, reveal yourself to us in worship, that there may be a new strength of purpose and a unity of spirit among us. Amen. I now invite you to stand and we'll sing to, together. Praise ye the Lord the Almighty. Praise ye the Lord the Almighty. Let's stand together and sing. Thank you. seated. If we say we have no sins, then we're deceiving ourselves. But if we confess our sins, our God who is just and forgiving will forgive us of our sins and our unrighteousness. It's in the confidence of this love in Christ that we can make our confession together. Please join me. Oh. There we go. Please join me. Forgive us, God, for being satisfied to remain a shattered and broken people. Our selfish pride has fractured our relationship to others and kept us estranged from our world. In our fear and worries, we have been unfaithful to Christ and ignored the Spirit's call to unity. Today, Jesus, heal our brokenness Renew our shattered hearts and mend our fractured lives through grace, love, and forgiveness. Grant us strength to live more fully as our part in the one body of Christ. Amen. And now I invite you to take a moment for personal reflection, confession, and listen for God to speak to your heart today.
my friends, through God's grace and in our faith, we are made a new creation. The old self passes away. A new life has begun in Christ. My friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us now stand and at a safe distance greet one another with the peace of Christ by making some noise together. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Those who are following the lectionary may know that part of this passage was the lectionary last week and part of it is this week. And I decided it because it really, the 12th chapter of, of 1 Corinthians is, is one whole argument by Paul. I combine them together for today for our worship. So I hope you find this meaningful from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Would you uh, join me in prayer? Oh, gracious God, we pray that you will send your spirit upon us. Open up our hearts, our minds, our very selves. That has the words proclaimed and read that we'll hear your words for us today. We pray this in the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. From Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaks by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of services, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but the same God who activates all of them in every one. And each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of, of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activities by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jew or Greek, slave or free. We were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I don't belong to the body, what would not, that would not make it any less a part of the body. 
And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. Or less respectable members are treated with great respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior members, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistant, forms of leadership, various uh, uh, kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts. We thank God for these words of life. We need you, and you, and you. We need you if we are going to be the body of Christ. We need you. I believe everyone has gifts to share. God knows your gifts to share. God knows the gifts that you share could change the whole direction of our ministry here at FPC, the gifts that you have could make a difference. We need you and you. We need you if we are going to be an example of the whole body of Christ. We need each other if we are to be the, the fuller image of Paul's words, though many one. Paul had a, a frustrating love with the Corinthian church. The church in Corinth was a church that Paul has started himself on his second missionary journey when he left and went to, to Europe. There he started this church in Corns with a few people of the book, a few faithful Jewish folks from the synagogue there, but mainly it was a church made up of Gentiles, people who had been pagan, either worshiping stone idols or worshiping the emperor, had now come to know the living God. Paul loved the church at Corinth, but he also struggled with the church at Corinth. It was a port city, a city where across the isthmus where, where docks, boats, dock, boats would dock on one side and then be hauled across the isthmus to the Gulf of Corinth on the other side to, to save the, the dangerous journey in the Mediterranean. 
It was a, a port city, a, 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 an international city. People from all over the Mediterranean, from Africa and Asia, from uh, Western Europe and Spain would have come through the city of Corinth in their, their journey. It's an important city for, for Paul. It's an important church for Paul. But then after his second missionary journey, and, and as he's beginning his third, he has settled in Ephesus. And there he has received a report about the church in Corinth that there are divisions, surprise, there are divisions in the church. There's a division over uh, allegiance. Uh, uh, another Christian preacher, Apollos, has come and, and also told the Corinthians about, about Christ. And some are saying, well, we follow Apollos. And others are saying, we follow Paul. And others say, we follow Jesus. And Paul's saying, no, we all follow Jesus. There's a man in the pagan tradition after his his father has died he has then married his wife his father's wife married his stepmother and there was a scandal in the corinthian church and paul tells him to get this in order but mainly i believe that the greatest problem we see in the divisions of the the corinthian church plays out here when paul reminds him in, in whose name they're baptized and who is baptized, both Jew and Gentile, both slave and free are baptized into one in Christ Jesus. You see, Paul is greatly concerned about the divisions within the, the, the Corinthian church. It appears that what is happening when they worship and particularly when they celebrate the Lord's Supper, which was at that time included in a meal of worship. What is happening is the servants are those who are free of their own time, but mainly more advanced servants, uh, house servants, servants with uh, particular skills would get off early. And they would come and, and have the meal and, and they would have their fill and then the, the, the lower servants the ones that had to work hard, that had to clean up, that had extended hours, then they would show up to the worship and the worship meal and all the elite, either the free or the more elite servants had eaten all the food and particularly had eaten the Lord's Supper. And Paul is, is greatly concerned over this division of, of status and I, I ethnic identity and he wants them to realize they have to be together. United has, has won. And so we see in our passage today, he focuses upon gifts and the unity of the Spirit of God. It's a strange list of gifts that Paul puts out there. One that doesn't necessarily set that well in our modern times. You know, we maybe know preachers and prophets, but those that speak in tongues and interpret tongues a different understanding of the world and of the spirits communication with people looking back to the old uh, uh, Apollo and Delphi the, the Oracle of Delphi that would would breathe the gas and give, give their oracles and and you know who went to the Oracle at Delphi only the rich only those that can pay see this speaking in tongues was a, a way of, of claiming an eliteness and a gift and one thing that Paul brings into this is it, it's an equalizer. Both Jew and Gentile, Greek and slave could have these gifts of, of tongues and interpretations. But an odd list of, of, of gifts, of, of prophets and, and apostles, but yet in the variety of the gifts that Paul shares, he shows a, a spectrum of gifts that relate to everyone and can relate to even our 21st century selves. And see, you see, Paul is telling the Corinthian church, and I believe Paul is telling you and me that each of us in the spirit of Christ has gifts for the common good. Each of us have gifts that add to the body of Christ. 
the Greek word for, for gifts is charismata. And we know it, somebody that's charismatic. You know, they have lots of charisma, lots of, of gifts. The gifts of attraction is usually how we use the word, but in this case, it's, it's gifts itself, or, or the charisma. Any gifts that you have is the, the charisma. And what's very interesting is that the origin of this word charisma is charis, which is the Greek word for grace. That in each of our gifts, we're giving it not by our own merit, not by what we deserve or what we earn, but we're giving it through grace. Each of us have unique gifts through God's grace that serve the common good of the body of Christ. That common good, once again, the, the Greek word is uh, symphoron, symphoron, where we get the word symphony. And a symphony we know is where many diverse instruments, strings, horns, drums, reeds, all come together in the, and in the hands of the conductor harmonize to make beautiful music. Yes, when we recognize our gifts and when we're willing to share them for the common good, we fit right into to Paul's model and God's blessing that though many won, though many still won in the body of Christ. And those words are for you and for me. And these words are for your gifts and my gifts. And we need to, to hear them. And, and I want you to, to believe that God wants to use your gifts. Now, we have an incredible gifted people here at FPC. As I say often to you, I'm humbled to be their pastor. And I'd be lost without you to lead and, and guide me and, and inspire me. But we together, I hope, are, are trusting this model that Paul has, has laid out for us and God has blessed for us, blessed for us. That each of us, when we share our very selves, when we risk to, to show our opinions, to show our skills, to show who we are, God blesses that unity and brings us together and in our sharing and session, committees, discussions with one another, we discern how to use these gifts and where they fit in to, to make our mission and ministry and our church body here as whole as God can make it, as full as God can make it. One of the problems is we often don't recognize people's gifts. We want to either brush them aside or, or we just don't, don't listen and we don't see. But part of our call of the body of Christ is to listen, is to open our eyes to see, is to really look at each other and to trust one another to, to bring our, our gifts together. As I said, I'm humbled to bring your your pastor because you bring those gifts together so well and particularly in these trying times that we've had to face not only have we had to deal with the whole cultural shift in our role of, of church and church life in our our society and you remember in the 60s and the 70s when the pews were filled with your workmates, people who, who came from school or, or work and, and wanted to see other people from work and school there and, and relate to one another. And it built up the body of Christ here to the blessing that we have here at, at FPC. But as our culture changes, we've had to change we've had to adapt even prior to the pandemic we are making changes to adapt to to our new life together and some ways we could be disappointed 
we could be down on the changes that we've experienced. But I want to tell you that God is using us who we are and where we are. Now I know at the session meeting last week, the elders didn't believe me when I preached to you last week, because I believe this. In the passage of the wedding, the best is, is, is yet to come. More translated, the best is for now. I want to tell you, I believe that now is our time for feeling God's presence. It often isn't when it's easy. It isn't when everything's going smooth and our committees are going smooth and our activities are clear and they're planned a year in advance. Yeah, there's struggle, but it's easier then. And you can begin to come confused that it's us that is doing it, our skills, our gifts, our timing. But when we're in the situation that we are now, in the budgetary struggles, in the mission struggles that we have, we know, I know, and I want you to know that when things come together, it's God using our weakness. It's God using our cracks in the earthen jar. It's God showing that God will use our gifts, that it's not our merit or what we've earned, but it's God using our gifts to plan a new direction and a new future for us. One of the ways that we're doing this is adapting and changing things that we've done in the past. What we have realized, I hope you've realized, that we can't do things the way we used to do it. We can't meet the schedule that we used to have of activities in the fall and the spring, even without a pandemic. It was wearing us out. We just don't have all the people. And you know this better than me. But what we're doing is adapting to who we are and who your gifts are. And maybe this is, I'm not going to say any blessing in the pandemic because we've lost too many folks in this. But God can give us insight. And if there is any insight that has come in this pandemic is that we have to change how we've done things in the past to doing them in a new way now. We, we're informed by our past. We're strengthened by it. We're, we're shaped by it. But as we move forward, we've had to do new things. And the wonderful thing is you've done it. You've tapped into your skills and are making these changes. You've tapped into your gifts and we are molding ourselves to be the body of Christ here in, in Florissant and in our, our neighborhood. We had to give up so much in our schedules in this pandemic. And maybe it was a realization that we couldn't have even done all that we had wanted to do. But I want to tell you, you're incredibly brilliant and dedicated leaders in session have really pooled their ideas and assessed their gifts and have charted a, a, an uncertain but a, a faithful plan in this spring. We, we have three events that folks have stepped up to lead using their gifts. We're going to have a, a, a kind of a grab and go like we've done with our learning center again this, this Easter adapting from our, our old Easter celebration with the bunny to being outside and now making a new adaption from our, our trunk and treat to an Easter event. This is imagination and gifts coming together. And then an elder stepping out to, to lead it. We have decided to, to try to, to blend together. And this is all in the works. So if it doesn't end up this way, please don't think I'm, you know, we're still in the works, still in the works. But we're trying to brand, blend the, the, the craft fair and the rummage sale. And, and we've got one elder that has worked on this this week and put this whole idea together with, with detailed plans, adapting from what we could not do 
with our numbers to what we maybe can do with our gifts. Another elder is already planning it, and you've seen it in, in our plans for our gift to the school. Something that we had done before, collecting school gifts, but then giving it to another organization to distribute. This time, from the gifts of our elders sharing and their knowledge of, of the, the Forsyth Ferguson School District and the, the Hazelwood School District, we're going to put these together and give them out ourselves. My friends, these are the adaptations of the gifts of the Spirit in the body of Christ. These are God's Spirit working in you and you and you. This is our trusting that we are part of the body of Christ. That we're not just on our own. That we're not just abandoned to our own resources and our own skills. But we have a God that goes before us. It won't be easy. It's not going to be simple. It's going to be hard, and there'll probably be some ups and downs, some wins, some loses. But when we do it together, Christ goes with us. And when we invite Christ with us and we trust the Spirit, we become the body of Christ in our world. And particularly, we become the body of Christ for others. And when we are willing to to recognize in you and in me and in each other that each of us have unique gifts from the Spirit of, of God and we learn to trust one another in those gifts and discern with one another in those gifts, then we are charting our course the best we can in the clearest biblical way that we can, in the most Spirit-led way, way that we possibly could as we face our future. My friends, we here at FPC need you, and you and you. We need your unique gifts and your unique blessings to make us whole. Now, it doesn't mean just like hey, that everyone will be prophets or everyone will speak in tongues. Not everyone will haul out hot dogs or, or carry uh, 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 bushels of, 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 of produce from the garden. But everybody, everybody can participate in their heart. Everybody, even you at home who can't come out, can pray for our mission. As I, I, I quote to a soul feast, uh, prayer is no substitute for action. But there is no action that is a substitute for prayer. My friends, you who are at home, pray for us and our mission. There will be a time when we'll be able to be back together. You who are here that can't get out, that can't do everything to, in order to be safe, pray. And, and in that prayer, you participate in your sharing and support of FPC. You have ownership in our mission. You have ownership in the way that we're adapting, and we have ownership in the way that we are showing our neighbors and our community and our world that we are part of the body of Christ. My friends, we need one another. We need each other. And when we are with each other, when we trust in each other, when we recognize that each of us have spiritual gifts then we are living as the body of Christ. Then we are living into God's call that even though we are unique and diverse, that we are one. When we come together and share God's gifts, we affirm Paul's word to us. Though we are many, we are one. Amen, amen, and amen.
Now's the time when we gather together to share our uh, joys and our concerns. I, I ask that you please be merciful with me. Sometimes I can hear, sometimes I can't hear, and sometimes they're complicated situations. And if I don't get it right, uh, forgive me. Uh, I will assure you that God knows, uh, that God doesn't uh, depend upon my words, but, uh, but that we share them together. But, uh, yeah, please be patient with me. Any joys or concerns to uh, share today? I'll take that. Sean, I'd like prayers for our son, Timothy, and his wife, Megan. Megan's going through a lot of emotional um, issues right now and um, has had to go into a, a behavioral health facility. 
and so I would like prayers for both of them. And also our, our neighbor, Linda Mueller, has been sick, and uh, prayers for her healing. Thank you, Ellen. It is the Calhouns that I, I completely messed up last week that I apologize for, uh, Ellen, and, and all truthfulness. That's what I have on my mind when I said that. I, I didn't understand the, the whole tragedy of what was going on with that family. And uh, like I said, but the Lord knows. And uh, thank you. We, we'll keep uh, Megan and, and uh, Timothy in our prayers and uh, uh, the, uh, the Newlands. Any other joys or concerns? I say in that, uh, Ellen, thank you for giving me again a request. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, now come together as the body of Christ. You know, at, at great distance with some online, but yet here still united through the Spirit of God. Let's pr let us pray. Oh, holy God, we uh, come to you today thankful that you have called us and united us and empowered you us with your Spirit. Help us, Lord, to remember and to realize that each of us have unique gifts that if we will only share, will add to the body of Christ and our strength in our mission. Too often, Lord, we become hesitant, wondering will they be accepted? Will our gifts be recognized? Will we be ashamed? Will we be embarrassed? Lord, we pray that you'll help us to have courage and boldness with our gifts that realize that they are for us and for us to use. Help us to, to feel free and open to, to trust what you've given us, to use it for the, the common good. And Lord, if your spirit is with us, we know that together we'll make a difference in our world, that we'll make it better. We'll make your kingdom seem just a little closer. Lord, it's as citizens of the kingdom that we come knowing that our prayers are heard and that your concern surrounds us. Lord, we ask that you be with Timothy and, and Megan. Help her in this trying time. Help them both in these times of uncertainty with emotions and issues and, and, uh, and where to move forward. Lord, we pray that your love will be their strength and, and be their unity and that it will also be their source of healing. Lord, we ask that you be with, with Linda and we watch over them and, and, and bring them healing and, and wholeness. Lord, we ask that you be with Betty and, and Barb, be with uh, Dick and be with Wilma and Bill and Georgiana, be with Candy and Ruth and Ellen, Tom, Lois, Lynn, Diane, Fern, Doris, Carol, Sarah, Pamela, Brittany, Jim, Lil, Sue, Ruth, and Jake, Sue, and Sean, and Lynn, and so many more, Lord, that, that you know, that need your healing and to know your, your presence. Each of them, Lord, has their own healing issues. Each of them need their own support and, and direction. And Lord, we pray that you will give that to them and that you will enable us to use our gifts and our very being to bring comfort and some uh, wholeness and understanding to, to those who are struggling in body and in mind. Lord, today we continue to pray for those that are struggling with this COVID COVID epidemic. Lord, yesterday over 2,000 people in our country died of this virus. Lord, we pray that you'll help those that are struggling with it to heal and to breathe. Those who are having long-term effects will have some understanding of how to move forward and bring wholeness. And Lord, we pray that you'll continue to be with all those that are on the front lines battling this uh, pandemic, those in hospitals and in care centers, those that uh, are making our lives still functioning uh, uh, during this pandemic. We ask that you help all of them 
to deal with these difficult and confusing and complicated problems and they help each of them to have the courage to move forward in serving others and in, in caring for health and, and life and, and trying to, to keep our society moving forward. Lord, uh, we ask that you watch over Florissant Presbyterian. Help us to stay safe in this pandemic. We have lost ones that we've loved to this uh, virus, and we pray, Lord, that we'll suffer no more. But if we do, Lord, we pray that we'll recognize that you are with us, that we're not in this sorrow and isolation alone, but that you are strengthening us, and that if we'll only call on you, that you will lead us through and keep our hearts strong and, and faithful. Lord, we pray that as we make our changes, as we adapt to try to, to reach out in mission and, and service, that we will be the spirit of Christ to others, that others will look to us and, and know that our Lord is Jesus, and that while we're doing this isn't for our own interest, but it's for the, the good of all and the, the blessings of God. Lord, we pray that you'll continue to guide us in our mission and ministry and service so that all that we do might be pleasing in your sight. And it's in your sight that your disciples first prayed as, as Jesus taught them. And today we follow them in our prayer saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have a number of things going on in our, our congregation. One of the things that I don't have a slide for because I didn't move it from an old uh, presentation was that on this Thursday we have our uh, grab and go meal. Uh, we need all the help we can get. We'll, we'll be here about uh, four o'clock. Hope to start serving a little bit uh, uh, after four, four fifteen, four thirty. Uh, please uh, come and, and show up. Uh, we could use your help if, if, as I said in the sermon, if, if you can't show up, if it's not available, please pray for us. We, we feel that. It makes a difference. And, uh, uh, but we hope that you'll be able to help us out on, on Thursday. Sean? Yes. I just wanted to say. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, we do need help, and we really need help to set up, which is between 3.30 and 4, I would say. Um, you don't have to stay the whole evening. If you can only spend an hour, that would help us out a lot. If you could come at the end of the evening to help clean up, that would help us out a lot. Um, but last time it was Sean and I, and we were, <laughs> for a while, we were like deer in the headlights. It was just kind of, well, maybe we can do this. Yeah. <laughs> but um, see if you have an hour that you could help us out on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Uh, I appreciate your, yes, making that more clear message. The other thing is, as we talked about last time, is our school supply drive. Uh, we're collecting these all, the, all through the summer, but we're trying to do uh, month by month in order that we can be more focused and we can have a process of gathering them. January, the month, is, is crayons, um, magic markers, and uh, colored pencils. Uh, uh, there's a, a variance of count from 16 to 24, 10 to 8, 10 to 12. So if you get there and it doesn't amount the exact number, this will still work and this will still do. What we don't want is for the crayons, the, which is really nice, the big 150 one. Uh, that's for older children. Uh, and so it won't really fit the, the group that we're trying to, to serve in the elementary schools. Uh, but we're collecting them. You'll see that there's some already collected out there. Uh, through the, the month, uh, uh, through the months, we would move on to paper, ring notebooks, uh, erasers. You, you know, it's on it, and it will be, this chart will be posted. So you'll know ahead of time. 
but what I want to say is if you miss a month, we can always go back. If you find a, a great sale in uh, March on uh, crayons, buy them, and then we'll, we'll put them in our, uh, in our package at the end. But this gives us a way to systematically work towards this mission. Uh, I think it's going to be a wonderful way for us to connect and, and make a difference in some of our, our youngest uh, lives uh, in our community. Uh, anything else on this that anyone would like to share? I sometimes, you know, because you guys are the ones that are really figuring this stuff out. I'm, I'm following your lead, and uh, it's wonderful. Uh, so if you have to, please, please interrupt me and, and share your thoughts. Again, uh, we're so thankful for your support, for those that have pledged and those that continue to support us uh, by mailing their offering in, by using uh, uh, PayPal, or, or simply dropping it in the plate in back. Uh, it makes all the difference, and we're going to have to make some changes this year, but this really gives us some, some solid ground to, on which to stand to move forward. So thank you for all of your gifts, and uh, fiscal gifts and spiritual gifts. But uh, let's now stand and we'll sing our final hymn, We Are One in Mission. I have pictures from a Presbyterian Disaster Relief Mission, particularly around Mayfield in Kentucky and around the world for our, our pictures here. But uh, we are one in mission. Let's stand and sing together. My friends, we need you. We need you and we need your gifts. And when we come together, you and me and all of us, in our gifts and in our lives, we become the body of Christ. Remember as you go out these doors that you, you are part of the body of Christ. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.
copy.